Protests against the Supreme Court's liquor ban on highways have intensified, with hoteliers meeting the tourism minister today. With crores in revenue, tourism and jobs at stake, even the government is now cautiously talking about adopting a middle path. But with a staggering 400 road deaths daily, India's roads are among the deadliest in the world. We asked tonight, will the court's order to keep liquor off highways, including cracking down on bars, restaurants and five-star hotels, actually save lives? Well, joining us on the show tonight, we have Arjun Sharma, MD of the Select Group, whose hotels, one of which is on the Delhi Jaipur Highway, have been directly impacted by the court's order. He was with the delegation that met the tourism minister today. Also joining us uh, is uh, Shilpa Sharma, whose brother Siddharth Sharma died when he was hit by a speeding Mercedes in Delhi's Rohini area by an underage driver who may have also been drunk at the time. Joining us also on the show tonight is Sanjay Hegre, is an advocate of the Supreme Court, and uh, GVL Narsimha Rao uh, from the BJP. But Shilpa, um, I'm going to begin with you first because, you know, when we talk about the statistics without a human face to them, sometimes they become just that, numbers that uh, often have very little meaning for us. When we talk about 400 deaths uh, a day in fatalities and road accidents, uh, it perhaps doesn't bring in the point home as much as your lived experience does. And as a nation, I have to say we were horrified when we saw CCTV footage of uh, your brother's uh, accident. Um, do you welcome the court's order and do you genuinely believe that this could make a difference going ahead? Well, definitely. I definitely believe that it's a very, very small step, but a very, very important step for the simple reason that, uh, see, we are not, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to blame anybody because it's very wrong to generalize. But the thing is, if, uh, you know, if you give, uh, there are so many laws in the country but the problem is with the implementation right. and now after this law also we know how people follow law in this country because they don't have fear so we know that it's not going to actually go down really well with people but at the same time it's not going to be really followed it's going to be hyped for a while right. and then it's going to settle down like every other law that's what I personally How think. do you respond though to the protests we've seen from particularly hoteliers and bar and restaurant owners? See money has been a very crucial uh, you know, but it's very important for everyone in the country, especially like India, where you really struggle every day to make money and survive. I understand all of that. But then I don't think so. Life is, you know, less important than money. Right. And if you, if it was my brother, it could be anybody else. So uh, you can't really stop people unless there is a law and, you know, enforcement actually in place. But I think that's a very important point that you're making. You know, the law is important as much as the enforcement of it is and there are several existing laws as well. Um, Arjun Sharma, you were part of the delegation that met the tourism minister today and uh, presumably you got some sort of assurance from him that, you know, it, it, this isn't over just yet. And, uh, you know, there's a very real fear that, you know, 200,000 crores uh, could be at, at stake for the hospitality business here. There are fears that a million jobs could be lost. But, you know, do you, are you then saying that you can't really compare hotels, restaurants with liquor vents, which is what this was originally about? So, uh, let me begin by expressing my condolences to Shilpa for her brother's unfortunate death. Let me also begin by saying that as a hospitality and tourism industry, we, we respect what the Honorable Supreme Court has said. The intentions of the court are good. However, our concern is that they've not been able to distinguish between selling of liquor in Wens and the hospitality trade. The hospitality trade, the tourism trade, the hotels is fairly well regulated. Now, if you actually look at even statistics uh, of the deaths on the road, I believe I just read a report that said the deaths on the road, about three to four thousand are attributed to drunken driving, and that's three to four thousand too many. However, what we do lack is, is regulation. But banning something is abdication of regulation. I think we have to realize that no country in the world has laws like this. What they have is very strict Darconian laws to prevent. There has to be a zero tolerance to, to drinking and driving, whether it is 500 meters or whether it is from a liquor van or it is from anywhere else. And yes, if someone is found drinking and driving, uh, take away his car, put him behind bars, and that's right. how it should be. That's how it happens so all over the world. This is really far more about enforcement than having an arbitrary number, whether it's 500 meters from a highway or anywhere else. Absolutely. So now you take, for example, liquor vents. Now, liquor vents may be 500 square feet. They can be moved behind. 
But what happens to a, a hotel that has been built for 10 years, 20 years, which has got many crores of investment, has thousands of jobs running on it, directly and indirectly, they can't move 500 meters behind. Now, we have a, we have a tourism image to protect. Uh, we have roughly, this industry employs about 50 million people across the country, right. contributes 9.5% of the GDP. And, and, and liquor, not that people go to hotels only to drink liquor, mm. but liquor is a part of an overall package. So what we need to do is to find the, the, the balance between these two issues. No, I think there would be those who would argue that there's a fine line to draw between, you know, liquor vends and, and, and restaurants and you could equally get liquor at both and then be back on the highway. So uh, it's clearly a distinction that the Supreme Court uh, isn't recognizing. Well, obviously, uh, from our perspective, there is a difference in selling. Now, in restaurants and hotels, you don't sell bottles. You just sell a glass of beer or a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. You don't sell bottles to, to people and to drink. And obviously, hotels have to meet in-house guest requirements as well. That is, in fact, right. it's a requirement for five-star okay. hotel categorization or four or three or whatever. I'm going to bring in the other guests on this tonight. Uh, Sanjay Hegde. Now, uh, you know, what's to stop someone really... Uh, 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 buying liquor from a vent that is beyond 500 meters from uh, a highway and take it with them in the car. Uh, you know, where, where does this actually uh, end? Because there's so many criticisms now being raised about uh, uh, the Supreme Court's ru ru uh, ruling. Somebody call, some critics also calling it judicial overreach at this point. See, the point is that as you correctly said, there is nothing which prevents a man who wants a drink from going 510 yards to buy the drink. But a line has to be drawn somewhere. It's not as if this 500 yards uh, or, or any kind of cordon sanitaire was entirely unknown. Uh, under, the, under the rules uh, which were existent under the Motor Vehicles Act itself, the, they provided for a 220 uh, meter uh, uh, limit counted from the middle of the road. However, the Supreme Court thought that that limit was not enough and they said 500 meters from the edge of the road. It was the hotels themselves which, contrary to the opinion of the Attorney General, uh, went and asked for a clarification from the Supreme Court saying that please exempt us. Once the Supreme Court was faced with this plea that, you know, some, uh, uh, some kind of sellers of liquor should be exempted, the Supreme Court so has Sanjay denied Hindi, are you saying effectively uh, almost everybody. Hotels Sanjay and restaurants in, in, have in brought this upon order. themselves by asking for a clarification. Surely it would have been uh, worse if it had, uh, you Get know, quiet. left it up to uh, uh, the, the law enforcers later on. Well... They had an opinion of the Attorney General which yes. said that the uh, earlier order applied only to winds and, and, and did not apply to hotels and restaurants. Nevertheless, some of them were overcautious or for whatever reasons they did approach the court for clarifications. That was also because many of the administrative authorities yeah. were erring on the safe side by yes. not giving right. uh, 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 licenses to sell, uh, sell uh, uh, liquor. I, at this point of time, they went, they asked for a clarification and the court having considered the clarification application has now ruled that even hotels are covered. As to whether they've bought it upon themselves, it's only like, uh, 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 it's a matter of conjecture. Okay. But okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, they could obviously not have sold uh, liquor without the license. Okay, now, now having come to this point, GVL Narasimha Rao, today we heard uh, the tourism minister talk about a possible middle path, talk about uh, finding a solution along uh, with the hotel industry. Is there a sense that this is too overarching an order, that it perhaps is bordering on prohibition? Is this something that should have been left to the states? Uh, but see, now that we have a, a judgment from the Honorable Supreme Court, I, I see this, uh, certainly this uh, judgment uh, uh, has been certainly inspired by public safety and safeguarding human lives. Certainly, so this, this can be, they can, it, this is unacceptable. But on the other hand, you have the colossal economic loss that this brings upon the tourism industry. So while trying to really soft, safeguard one problem that we are faced with, we are creating a possibly even a bigger uh, uh, problem of uh, unemployment. 
so certainly given all the and, and then the ag's opinion was very clear but if you look at the judgment itself the very first line of the judgment says the issue we address is about the presence of liquor vans on the national and state highways so the judgment itself was very very clear in the first place so the uh, the clarification that was sought possibly was was un 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 uh, unrequired uh, but now that you have a clarification from the court uh, i think uh, uh, all the state governments are concerned about it the industry yeah. is worried about it so how do we try and uh, bring about a balancing act of uh, taking the concerns of the honorable court into account and exactly on how do we try and minimize the economic uh, uh, effect economic impact on the industry i think this is a difficult balancing act but it must be really attempted to safeguard the industry to safeguard employment of millions of people now shilpa i want you to come in once again at this point doesn't safety trump commercial concerns yes definitely because uh, right now everybody you know is talking about the money nobody right. is actually right. taking in you know consideration that why it was done eventually in the first place now i agree as i said earlier also money is important but are you know when somebody dies are these hoteliers i'm sorry to say this but are these Respect. hoteliers or anybody is taking that responsibility when when there is somebody who's leaving your restaurant with making a bill of you know 15000 20000 you're making big bucks and the guy is high on money power whatever it is driving are you stopping them are you also taking an initiative to stop those people no but you are taking an initiative to protest i have nothing against anybody i have nothing but i really respect what the government has done for the first time for the simple reason Not the government, you, supreme court supreme court yes the supreme court has done for the first time because i personally feel that it's a very very important step right now somewhere it has to stop somewhere people have to also morally take a responsibility as a society overall because right now what is happening is everybody is only talking about the money the industry right. is going to do everything is just about the but money but having said that you know these are very real concerns as well we're talking about a million jobs that could potentially be lost we're talking about a hit to the tourism industry uh, we're also talking about actually for states themselves uh, thousands of crores lost in excise revenue so the estimate is a million jobs the estimate back of the envelope calculation shows about 100000 crores of uh, revenue loss to the states and the center now while we fully respect the the view of the of shilpa as a, as a, as a, as a family member of a of a unfortunate incident but let me tell you in gujarat we have prohibition but we still have debts because what the, all this does is mm -hmm. it takes things underground it takes things into the illegal domain i i think what the industry wants is we fully support the decision we fully respect the honorable court's direction but what we are saying is regulate it faster regulate it better now for example we all know that gst is coming in there's going to be thousands of vat inspectors who are going to be who will have no jobs to do at at state borders maybe they can be redeployed to implement uh, a stricter policy on the highways and on the roads and i fully agree with you ma'am that we as a hotel industry and the restaurant industry has to be more responsible lots of us are but some of us are not so you know it's unfortunate we can't sweep everybody under the same brush so what we are saying is that we will be happy to look at self regulation we will be happy to look at that we can even have a small cess that contributes to road safety to communication it's about implementing an existing law in the spirit of the law now tomorrow you will say for example let me tell you if 6 to 7000 deaths have taken place through through uh, drunken driving you know about 75000 deaths have taken place in north india alone due to fast driving so should we say that all cars and trucks on the on, on our road should have a speed limit of 30 km an hour that's the next thing there is no limit to these 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 no, no. Uh, okay. connections i i okay. uh, clearly, clearly, clearly i don't think there is there is no shilpa doesn't doesn't agree I don't but i agree to this there yes. are the the that on the roads uh, if you'll total you'll sum it up it is 5 lakhs and your this is bigger than any uh, but all not terrorist to, attack not only due to maximum drunken driving maximum is drunken driving Three percent. Three percent. No, that is. I think you've got the, the numbers wrong. By the National wrong. Highway Authority's document. Sir, you know how authorities work and how the numbers and everything works. You can see it in Delhi. You don't have to go really far. By the time you'll reach home, you'll find at least five people drinking and driving. I have seen it personally in Delhi. People do that. Yes, so I, we fully See, agree. I have, we fully agree. Ban sir, all. Sir, today you are talking. Ban all. Sir, dri all drinking and driving. Sir, I'm not saying that. Sir, today all you are only driving. trying to. Uh, today the first time you have said. that okay we will consider and take a responsibility of you know safety road you are talking about this today because you are in trouble right now 
nobody else has ever thought about anybody's safety on the road. I'm not saying it's a uh, hotel's responsibility, but yes, somewhere down the road, you guys are responsible as well. But nobody takes a responsibility, not, neither the society, neither the people, those who are making money, or neither the people, those who are actually right. drinking. No, so All right, I think, I think we will leave the last words on this uh, show to Shilpa tonight. Of course. Because uh, no doubt yeah. we'll be talking about this for several days to come before this middle path or the solution, whatever it is, uh, it, it is achieved. There are clearly two sides uh, to this. But I'd like to thank uh, Sanjay Hegwe, Jeevan Narasimha Rao, Arjun Sharma and Shilpa for joining us on this program tonight.